take away our sin So we could get to know our God again The Lord is good, the Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him Welcome to day two of God's Big Story. I'm so excited that you've decided to join us again today. Um, you're so welcome. If this is your first day, you're especially welcome. And if you want to check out what we learned yesterday, you can see the previous video on Facebook and you can learn along with us that God created the entire world. Isn't that amazing? Everything in it, including me and including you. And today we're going to have another story. We're going to go back over our memory verse again and we're going to have a new song. So I hope you all enjoyed those things yesterday and I hope you're really, really excited again for today. But before we start, once again, I'm going to start in prayer. So if you all want to join with me, we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, we thank you so, so much for another day that we can come and learn more about you. Lord, we thank you um, for our friends, for our family. Lord, we thank you for keeping us safe um, during this sickness and all the other great things, um, Lord, that you give us each and every day. We thank you so much, especially for Jesus. Lord, we thank you um, that he came into the world um, to die for our sins. Father, we thank you that if we put our faith and our trust in him, you will forgive us for our sins. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to listen really, really well to Ryan as he comes to tell us our story. You'll help us um, to learn something new about you. We pray all these things in your great name. Amen. Okay, so day two, story number two, over to you, Ryan. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Boys and girls, you've caught me in one place, which if I'm being honest, I'm never in. I'm in the garden. I do not enjoy it or gardening. The weather like it is now is always terrible, it's always raining, all the weeds and all the work that you have to do, I do not enjoy it at all. But unlike me, uh, Adam, after God had created Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eve, he loved being in that garden. He and the garden lived in perfect harmony. Um, boys and girls, Adam even enjoyed dominion over that garden. Come here Charlie, come here boy. Adam even got to name all of the animals of the air and of the land. Hey Charlie boy. And even beyond that, boys and girls, one day God said that it was not good for Adam, for man, to be alone. And so one night from one of Adam's own ribs, God created for Adam a woman. And he called her Eve, and Adam was able to take Eve as his wife. And the two of them then lived in the Garden of Eden in perfect harmony. And before God gave Eve to Adam, he gave him this command. And we can read about it in Genesis chapter 2. You see, God had given Adam this amazing garden full of trees from which Adam could pick and eat from. And God allowed Adam to do that except for one. He told Adam that from this one tree known as the tree of knowledge, you must not eat from that tree or you will surely die. So God had given Adam this amazing garden full of all these things. But with this one command, do not eat from that tree. And boys and girls, just like Adam was given this command by God, in how to live in God's creation in the Garden of Eden. We have, in God's word, the Bible, we have been given commands by, from God, no. And boys and girls, just like God had given Adam this command in how he was to live in God's creation in the Garden of Eden, God has given us, you and I, in his word, the Bible, commands for our good. No. And boys and girls, just like God had given Adam this command in how he was to live in God's creation in the Garden of Eden, God has given us commands of how we are to live, again, in his creation, in his world. 
Perhaps most well known, we find it in Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments. To have no idols before God. To honour the Sabbath, to honour your father and mother. Perhaps you could name many others of those as well. But boys and girls, there's a problem with that. And that is, boys and girls, that you and I, none of us, are able to keep the commands of God perfectly. None of us have kept all of these commands all of our lives. It's not even possible for us to do so. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have fallen short of the perfect standard that God has set out in the Bible. Boys and girls, the God that created us, the God who has created this world, he is perfect. And the problem is, is that we are not but boys and girls, back with Adam and Eve, at this point in the story, they did not know what it was to disobey God. They were still living in the Garden of Eden in perfect unity with the plants and the animals that were there. But there was somebody else in the garden who was against all of this, who was against God's plan. And that was Satan. Satan was one of God's angels in heaven who then desired to be like or above God. A great war broke out in heaven and Satan and his angels, his followers, were then cast out of heaven forevermore. And one day Satan appeared to Eve in the garden as a serpent, back then one of the most beautiful animals in the garden. And he went there to tempt Eve. He actually said to Eve, did God really tell you to never eat, to not eat at all from this tree? Did he really say that? And Eve said, yes he did. He told us that if we did, we would surely die. And Satan told her no. Satan told her that was not the case. What really was going on is that if they ate from this tree, then they would become like God. They would gain true knowledge. And Eve fell for the Satan's temptation, for his trick. She started to look at the tree. She started to see how beautiful the plants, or sorry, the fruit on it was. She began to stare at it. And eventually she took the fruit from the tree and began to eat it. Not only did she eat it, but then she went to Adam and told him to take it as well. Boys and girls, Adam and Eve had just disobeyed the one command that God had given them. Boys and girls, you join me now on what was sometimes used as our house's naughty step in here just at the bottom of our stairs. If me or my sister, when we were younger, uh, had done something wrong, we were taken away from the TV, taken away from everything else, and made to sit down here and think about what we had done. And boys and girls, after Adam and Eve had taken of the fruit, something serious dawned on them. They realised what they had done. They had broken God's command. God had created this, had given them this amazing creation. He had created them. He had given them dominion over that creation. But boys and girls, they had broken the one command that God had given them to not eat the fruit from that tree. Boys and girls, Adam and Eve had sinned against God. They had broken God's command. And boys and girls, through what Adam and Eve did, sin entered into our world. I want you to listen to this verse, Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. It says that through one man sin entered the world, that being Adam. And death through sin... And thus death spread to all men because all men sinned. Boys and girls, what this verse is telling us is that because of what Adam and Eve had done, sin then entered into our world. And then as we entered into this world, as sinners, as people who have also broken God's commandments, who have also fallen short of his standard, that then death entered into our world. Boys and girls, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. That's because sin separates. Sin separates us from God. Sin separates us, sinful people who have fallen short of God's standard. It separates us from the holy and perfect God who created us, who created this world, who created Adam and Eve. It separates us from going into a relationship with him right here, right now. And it separates us ultimately from one day going to be with him in his kingdom in heaven. Boys and girls, sin separates us 
from God. Boys and girls, before we get started again, I've got a really quick five second challenge for you. In the background, somewhere behind me, I have hidden an apple, a red apple. I need you to find it. Five seconds, go, okay? I'm gonna move out of the way. Uh, three more seconds, two more seconds. Did you find it? There it was up here between the two lights. A lovely pink lady, one of the best kinds of apples. Boys and girls, you see, when Adam and Eve realized what they'd done, they tried to hide from God. Boys and girls, when they had once walked and talked freely with God in the garden, they were now afraid of him. They realized of their sin and so they tried to hide. Boys and girls, they should have realized that nobody can hide from God. And so God actually came and spoke to Adam and Eve. And Adam told God that he hid because they were afraid. Adam realized of his sin. He realized that he was naked before God. And God actually asked them, how did you know this? Did you take of the fruit? Did you eat from the tree from which I commanded you not to? And boys and girls, what began then was kind of like a blame game. Adam said, but it was the woman that you gave me. She gave me the fruit and I just ate it. Eve then responded, but it was the serpent. Satan, he was the one that tricked me into doing it. Boys and girls, we can be like that as well, can't we? One of the phrases me and my sister used all the time, anytime we were in trouble, was he started it. She started it. Blaming everyone else for what we had done. But do you see, boys and girls, when it comes to our own sin, for the commandments that we have broken in our own lives, there is nobody to blame. There is no one else to blame. And boys and girls, the consequences of our sin as we've just been reading and looking and thinking about, is serious. And boys and girls, the consequences for Adam and Eve and the serpent's sin was very serious as well. God said to the serpent, I will curse you above all animals and you will crawl on the ground for the rest of your life. He said to Eve that you will be cursed in childbirth and will go through great pain and your husband will rule over you. And to Adam, he said that you will toil and wrestle with the ground as you seek to provide food for you and your family. And then what God did is he took Adam and Eve and cast them out of the garden. He took the gates to the garden and he sealed them shut with heavenly angels for Adam and Eve to never return. Boys and girls, thank you so much for listening. And with this final bit, I'm gonna finish. You see, boys and girls, in the midst of all of these terrible things happening, Adam and Eve had now been cast out of the garden of Eden. In the midst of all of this, God made a promise. From as early as Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, God made a promise that someday someone would come who would defeat Satan's power, who would break the power of sin and death in your and my life. And boys and girls, we can read about and know that person. It's what this book is all about. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, it's the Son of God who left heaven and came into this world to live a perfect life. The only person to have ever walked this planet, to have never broken any of God's commands, who would then go and die upon a cross. Boys and girls, remember, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But boys and girls, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, lived that completely perfect life, so that when he would then go to that cross, he would pay the price for your and my sin. He would pay those wages for us. And boys and girls, he did not stay dead, but three days later, he would rise again. Having defeated Satan's power, having broken the power of sin and death in our lives. Boys and girls, opening up the one and only way that you and I can have our sins forgiven and enter into that relationship with God again that was broken when Adam and Eve sinned. But boys and girls, only, only if you would come and put your trust and faith in him and him alone. Coming before him and being truly sorry for how you've broken God's commands in your own life. God, I am truly sorry for how I have sinned against you. Believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died on that cross for you and then when he died upon that cross that he paid the price in full for your sins believing that the lord jesus christ died upon that cross for you putting your trust and faith in him and him alone 
But boys and girls, not just saying these things as words, but truly believing them. Saying that I am now going to turn from my own way of living my own life. Saying, God, I now want to turn from that and I now want to live for you. I now want to follow and obey your commands. God, I want you to be the Lord and Saviour of my life. I want you to be number one and number one only. Boys and girls, it's my hope and my prayer uh, that you will come to put your trust and faith in him and him alone. That you will accept this offer of salvation. That you will have that relationship that was broken when Adam and Eve sinned. Restored with God. That one day you will be with God in his kingdom for eternity. Thank you so much Ryan for teaching us our story today. Boys and girls I hope you're all listening really really well and you learned something new today in our story. I'm now going to hand over to Jenny who's going to teach us again our memory verse from yesterday and help us to learn it and make sure we all know it really really well. So hope you all listen well and join in. Hi boys and girls, I hope you're all having so much fun at the minute at home. Maybe you've been doing lots of baking, maybe you've been making a jigsaw or playing in the garden with your brothers or sisters. These are some really strange times that we're living in at the minute. It's hard to understand what's happening in the world and maybe you didn't even get to finish school or say goodbye to your teachers and that can make us feel sad or worried. You know, sometimes when you feel sad or worried, it's a good idea to do something to cheer you up. You could go for a walk, you could paint a picture, you could play with your toys, or you could even read a book. Sometimes when I'm not feeling so good, I know it's a good idea to read a book. And I have a book with me today, and it is the best book that is ever written. Do you know what it's called? It's the Bible. The Bible is the most important book that was ever written. The Bible was written by God and it is full of so many different books with lots of different stories and many things that people have said. But most importantly, this Bible contains the words of Jesus. When Jesus was here on earth, he said many amazing things and he told many amazing stories and they're all written inside this book. And you know, boys and girls, this book is true. We can trust this book. And inside this book, there are lots of verses. And maybe in Sunday school or in church or in kids clubs, you learn about these verses. Well, the reason we learn about these verses is that when we feel sad or upset, it's good to remember these verses. Or when you're feeling happy, you can remember these verses and you can thank God for the amazing promises that are in his word and you can share them with your friends and family. So today we're going to learn another new memory verse. And remember, every memory verse that we learn is true. Everything that God has said in the Bible is completely true and we can trust it. Today, our memory verse is found in the New Testament in John chapter 14, verse six. I want you to help me learn this memory verse today and use our actions. So let's say it together after two. Ready? One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I think we can do it one more time and even better. Ready? After two. One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This verse seems a wee bit funny, doesn't it? Jesus said that he is the way, the truth and the life. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's see if we can work it out together. Firstly, Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus means that he is the only way to get to heaven. This is the most perfect place ever. This is where God, the creator of the whole world lives and in heaven, Everything is perfect. There's no sadness. There's no tears. Everyone is happy. But there's one thing that really does not make God happy. In fact, the Bible tells us that it makes God really angry. 
You see, boys and girls, each of you, your parents, every family member, even your teachers and your friends, even me, we are all born with sin. And sin is all the bad things that we think, say and do that disappoint God, that make him really angry. And because of our sin, we're separated from God. We can't be with him. We can't go to heaven with him when we die. And because of our sin, we go to this horrible place called hell when we die. And we will be separated from God forever. It's because of our sin that we cannot get to heaven. But this verse tells us that Jesus is the only way. The second thing that Jesus tells us is that he is the truth. Everything Jesus said is true. Everything God has written in the Bible is true. And that's why we use this action of the Bible for truth, because the Bible is the truth. Sometimes we can hear stories or we can hear or read things and they don't seem true. But because Jesus was perfect, he never said, did or thought anything wrong. We can know that everything he says is the truth. Not only does this verse tell us that Jesus is the only way, but this verse tells us that Jesus is the only true way to get to heaven. This is the greatest news ever, that God has made a way for us to not go to hell, but to be with God forever in heaven. Because of Jesus, we don't have to be separated from God because God sent his only perfect son to die on the cross for you and for me. Jesus took the punishment that we deserved for our sins and he died on the cross for all the wrong things that we have ever done and ever will do. And because he loves us so, so much, Jesus took our place on the cross so that we could be with God forever. Jesus is the only true way that we can get to heaven. Finally, in our verse, Jesus said, I am the life. We know that Jesus was perfect. We know that Jesus died on the cross for us. But boys and girls, Jesus did not stay dead. The Bible tells us that on the third day, Jesus rose again. Today, Jesus is alive in heaven with God the Father. Only God had the power to raise Jesus from the dead. And only God has the power to save you and me. But boys and girls, we have to do something too. This is really, really important. Not only do we have to know that we are born with sin and recognise all the wrong things we do, but we have to believe that everything God says in the Bible is the truth. Finally, we have to pray to God. We have to ask him for forgiveness and we have to say sorry for all the wrong things we have done that make God angry. And if we put our trust in God, he will save us. We no longer have to be separated from God when we die. We can go to heaven and live with God forever. That is why our verse finishes by telling us that no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only true way that we can be saved, that we can have our sins forgiven, that we can go and be with God, our Father, in heaven and live with him forever because Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. Let's practice saying our verse a few more times just to make sure that we can remember it. After two, okay? One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Oh, I think we can do it even better, okay? So even louder, okay? Do all your actions. And do you know what? I'm going to take away some words. Okay, you ready? After two. One, two. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I think we can do it without any words. Do you think you can do that? Let's go. After two. 
1, 2. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you so, so much, boys and girls, for helping me learn that memory verse today. And I hope that you will keep on practicing that memory verse at home. And remember that Jesus is the only true way that you can get to heaven. If you trust in him, if you believe that everything in God's word is true, and you ask God to forgive you for your sins, you will be saved and you can be with him in heaven forever. Boys and girls, what amazing news that is, that if we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, if we say we're sorry for all of the wrong things that we've done and we say we want to follow Jesus, the Bible teaches that he will forgive us, even though we don't deserve that at all. And we can spend an eternity with him in heaven. What amazing news that is. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today. Um, that is us at the end of day two of God's Big Story. But as always, to close, we're going to have another song. So I hope you'll jump up on your feet and join us in singing Counting on God. Bye, guys. <laughs>